It's all about Jamara as the dogs defeat the Ds. The Cats hold off a spirited power side and the Tigers rue some costly missed opportunities in the season's first draw. Hello and welcome to the round so far, brought to you by Amy. I'm Riley Beveridge. This is Kane Corns. Kane, it's been a wild weekend of footy so far. We'll start at Marvel Stadium because the Dogs got a little bit of revenge for last year's grand final. What a performance it was. So these are the big, crucial last quarter moments. Cosie Pickett kicks that one and you think it's all going to be the Demons' way. They felt like they had control mm. of the game for the most part. They were terrific from centre bounce, but then... His accuracy went amiss. He missed that one and didn't even score. He missed this one directly in front. And you can see the contact wasn't great. And then Stephen May does that. Bonzapelli was awesome. He was switched on. Handball's off to McRae. He puts the dogs within reach. And they were good enough in the crucial moments and one-on-one -on -one contests like Bailey Dale here just to get an arm in and a spoil in. Fritch has been criticised for not centering the footy. So you have to think that played on his mind. And here's the youngster. Garcia just running into an open goal and finishing as coolly as you like to put the Western Bulldogs three points in front with 4.30 to go. They were good enough to hang on, and this is his fifth from mm. outside 50. As good a goal as you are going to see, and as you said, it's all about Jamara tonight. He kicked a career-high three goals last week. He backs it up with a career-best five goals tonight. He was outstanding. This was a coming-of-age performance. He has the opportunity to become one of the game's great entertainers, doesn't he? Absolutely. There's a bit of Jeremy Cameron about him, I reckon. I think the way that he can get up the ground, his left foot, he's a beautiful shot for goal. He's got good second efforts, and he's been building into this performance. So, look, credit to the Western Bulldogs with the way that they've managed him. They've, they've made him earn it. And every time he's playing, he's adding something to his game to the point where he broke out. And there are five really good goals tonight. And his ability to mark the ball cleanly inside 50 in a packed situation like this. And then underrated skill, not that it should be, is that. And you've been yeah. really hot on his ability to finish. Well, that's what he did so well at under-18s level. And it was why he's the pick one in 2020. Because he's such a clean mark above his head. And he's such a great finisher when he does get opportunities inside 50. They've got a sort of semi-weird situation where Josh Bruce... Hasn't been great since he came back. We've got to give him time. Two games back from an ACL. Do I have time, though? Yeah, they're in a real finals race, <laughs> well, aren't they? That's it. They're into the eight now, but the, you feel like they're up, They're going to have to win two of mm. the last four, and that probably gets you in. At some point, we thought 13, it's probably going to be 12, but he just doesn't look like it, yeah. Josh Bruce. Like, they can't hide him on the field. He was easily accounted for by Stephen May, and in a couple of those crucial one-on-ones, he was pushed off the ball too easily. So I'm not sure that I would play him Next week, um, he's hardly gone near the footy. So the next month is Geelong, Fremantle, Jitterburst and Hawthorne. They need to win two of those, but there's a couple of win winnable games in there. We'll head to the Gabba now where the Brisbane Lions got over the line in the Q clash against Gold Coast. As they have so often, this one was more of a contest. They were seven points down at three-quarter time and kicked five goals to one in the yeah, final Yeah, once term. again, a couple of these crucial moments. Scores level with only 13 minutes to go and Atkins tries to do something he shouldn't have. He was pinged for holding the ball. Lions goes back and finished. They've won their last six against the Suns by an average of 60 points. So they're, they're absolute whipping boys. Link McCarthy there with just some skill to the, uh, to the barometer. Mm. Matheson, who kicked a couple tonight. So felt like they're starting to get some players back in form. Like Joe Danaher had seven shots on goal. He kicked three goals, four. Zach Bailey was much better, 24 and a goal. He's been a bit flat of recent times. Oscar Manikinerni kicks that freakish goal out of the <laughs> ruck there and didn't he love it? He actually couldn't believe it. So some players back into form. Charlie Cameron was awesome. Yep. Again, he was almost unstoppable. Won a lot of one-on-one -on -one ground balls inside forward 50 and was able to finish. So first time they've won back-to-back -back games since yeah. round eight and nine. They've just been going for a few reasons that are outside of their control, but I feel like it's been a really strong last fortnight and really important they get some good players back in form. So where do you see them now? As you mentioned, first time in 10 games they've won back-to-back -back matches. They're a game clear inside the top four now. Are they a genuine premiership threat? Given we've seen Melbourne's a bit vulnerable the last month or well, so. Well, they're equal second, mm -hmm. and they're only not in that position by three percentage points. Yeah. So, like, they 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 have to be doing something right, and I feel like they have a lot of star power. I'm worried about their tall forwards. Like, mm -hmm. Nick Stay just hasn't looked like it for, you know, certainly seven or eight weeks. Danaher, as I said, he's, he's back in form, but Hipwood, you know, I'm worried about those two. So the second and third tall forward options, but their midfield is stacked. I feel like their defence is rock solid, yep. but crucial for them to finish top two. Levi Casbolt kicked four goals, could find himself in some hot water at the match review, though. Following this incident with Daniel Rich, Rich subbed off with concussion. Do you reckon he's going to be in trouble for this one? I don't, I don't know. I, he looked clumsy, but as we mm. look at the replay here, we'll see that Rich dives, he goes to ground and then almost ducks into it. And Levi, I feel like, 
running at full speed looks worse as you slow it down, almost mm. trying to avoid that contact. So I think he'll be OK, but never nice to see a player wobbly on their feet after a head of high hit. We head to the Adelaide Oval now where Geelong held off a late fight back from Port Adelaide. This was another one with just a chaotic final quarter where the Cats finally got over the line. This was an awesome game of footy. This is the first centre bounce of the last quarter after Port Adelaide had smashed Geelong in the third term. We'll get to that in a moment. And each side had their opportunities. This is an absolute hanger from Georgiades, but he goes back and hits the post. That would have put Port Adelaide yeah, in, in a draw situation with them and they had their opportunities. Carl Amon goes back and slots that. He had a lot of the footy early, Carl Amon. Didn't use it possibly as well as he would have liked. And then that's just a beautiful kick to the man of the moment. Tom yeah. Hawkins, he kicked four. Jeremy Cameron kicked three. Seven goals between them again. Felt like Cleary did his best against Hawkins, but he was always outside of his weight division. And Jonas was good on Cameron, but they got the better of them. And that was a pretty dicey free kick I would have thought I think Tom Hawkins put some extra mayonnaise on that but credit to him he's gone back and finished late to ice the game for the Cats what a player he is yep. and a really good performance from a side who was challenged significant um, from a Port Adelaide team who it was the, essentially their elimination final they've got so many stars the Cats you mentioned Cameron Hawkins Dangerfield but it's one man who's not really the most heralded player in this midfield in Tom Atkins, who's been doing the most damage recently. He had 12 touches in a pretty decisive final term. Well, they were beaten up in the third term. Port Adelaide kicked eight goals to one in that term. So I feel like they would have gathered the midfield troops at three-quarter time. And this is the response you got. I mean, he's, he's an unsung hero mm. at the club this year. And his last quarter is as good as you're going to see. And it's not the standout stuff. It's that. It's winning a 50-50, then forcing territory your way. It's doing that against two Port Adelaide players, head down and get the ball to a teammate. It's that intercept there in his defensive action. So you were pretty strong pre-show that he's the best defensive midfielder in the game. Yeah, I think you get players who sit defensive side of the, the contest and they're underrated because they don't necessarily win as much possession as the, the Dangerfields and the Selwoods, but he just gets hands in there mm. all the time. He's so important in the way they manage to do that. Now, Port Adelaide, you mentioned, had a rallying third quarter. This could be the difference for them between finals and not playing finals. They're now two games outside the top eight. Have a look at those scoring runs. 56-8 to eight against Carlton, 40-8 to eight against Freo, 50-9 to nine against Geelong. But all three of them, given the fact they were 50, 40 and 34 points down, resulting in losses. Yeah, it's extraordinary how they started the season so poorly and then in-game momentum has swung so significantly against them because the reason they've fought back into games is because they were chasing the lead. So it's almost like... The pressure is released once yeah. you're chasing a significant lead that the opposition have got. And then they try a few different things. They play more attacking. They got their game going from centre bounce. But they're just three or four key personnel away from being mm. a good side. And that's been found out all year. Uh, Finlayson was fine in the ruck for a yeah. quarter. But then you get found out late as you're tired. Dixon is the same. He looked exhausted in the last quarter. They're a key defender short. That's mm. why Cleary is giving away 12 kilograms to Tom Hawkins and Jonas probably 10 centimetres to Jeremy Cameron. So, And the key midfielder, like some of their ball use, Willem Drew, Ollie Wines, not great ball users yeah. at all. So key defender, extra midfielder is essentially what they need to address in the off-season. You want to go behind the goals to look at a Tyson Stengel major in the third quarter? This is a pretty pivotal one. just moment. smart. They're, their small forwards work so hard. So come up to stoppage and you've got a decision. Am I going to drop off or am I going to stay with him? So that's Houston there. He decides just to watch the ball and I'm not exactly sure what he's doing. So watch what happens when Stengel gets in behind. He leaves Houston for dust and then you look further. You want an extra against Jeremy Cameron. But you get confused and Cameron's movement makes it confusing and then Stengel's the one that drifts up at the stoppage and then back towards mm. goal and makes you pay and he just overrides Port Adelaide's spare that they had protecting against Cameron in that stage. Uh, so Close does it really well, Myers does it yeah. really well. Um, so they're just a really smart group whose forwards are prepared to get right up the ground. Mm. Even Hawkins and Cameron and Rowan, they get right up and it doesn't matter who's deep, they just rotate and keep the opposition defence guessing. Get to some lighter stuff now with our Amy Clangers. We'll say at the Adelaide Oval to begin with. Jeremy Cameron, you won't want to see this back too many times. Oh, my, I could not believe that he... What's he doing? <laughs> I just can't believe a player, probably one of the most skillful players in the game, misses from that position. But he saw the funny side. He did, as did Jack Zebel, who I think was trying to suggest to a few teammates after pass? this that he meant to centre this one to Cal Coleman-Jones. The goal is Not that. quite sure. Joe Danaher profiting from this one from Elijah Hollins, who was actually pretty good on Impressive. debut, but would have won this one back, Yeah, I think. you could probably do that at the lower levels, but you've got to realise Joe's 203 centimetres <laughs> and he's going to intercept that, so that was one of his goals. And this is the biggest clanger of the year, I think. Pierce straight to Bolton. 
an absolute grubber. Replace your divots. And when it's a draw <laughs> and you give up a goal like that, that hurts. It did. It did. I'm surprised Shea Bolton didn't show him this Yeah, week. I was th thinking he might, actually. <laughs> All right, we'll stick at Marvel Stadium now on Friday night. The season's first draw took us 19 weeks, but we finally got it. This was... A pretty remarkable final quarter with some huge missed opportunities. We'll get to that soon from Noah Bolter and Cumberland as well. Yeah, no, so this is Bolton again, once again. Oh, look, Fremantle did a lot right. I thought they had a number of entries, but they just couldn't They couldn't score, really. There was not, none of their targets fall to the ball were commanding. Tabernet was poor. That's Bailey uh, who kicked that one there. Bailey Banfield, I should say. That was awesome. That kick inside was on, but Brayshaw just dropped it. Great hit up from Baker there, and this is the moment of the game. So two minutes on the mm. clock, you think it's over. He's just got to kick a point. Play on, and Frederick comes from the clouds to actually get him. One of the great defensive efforts you've ever seen. And then they had one more opportunity. How good is this from Marlene Pickett? Firstly, the pick up, the tap to himself, gather it. Lovely kick to Noah Cumberland, and you have to feel sorry for the kid because he's been great the last month coming into this team. Obviously, just didn't know that there was only four or five seconds can roost left him too. on the scoreboard. Well, I mean, we kick saw it, it he kicked two, and we saw it early on that he can kick it. He yeah. kicked one from 55, and mm. it went six rows back, so the distance was never going to be an issue. Clearly not his fault, no. but we need to go behind the goals to have a look once again at what Frederick did here, because we're looking, once Bolter marks this, the shot clock's going to run. Mm. Firstly, excellent umpire, and we'll speed this up, but look at the two Fremantle players to the left of your screen there, and one is Frederick will highlight him. Yeah. And the speed that he moves as soon as he sniffs that shot cock on has wood, expired, and he comes from nowhere. And just an awesome game-saving, potentially season-defining spoil. And as I said before, one of the great defensive efforts we've ever seen. It's kind of awareness that can change a team's season. We mentioned last week Richmond's issues retaining leads in the last quarter. Another game where they've dropped an advantage going into the final term. They're now one of just four sides since 1999 to drop four drop points from seven games in uh, in quarter four. Yeah. What about their last three weeks? I, I mean, the kick after the siren, Noah Anderson against Gold Coast, we had last week, and the mistakes that they made against North Melbourne for only their second win, and then the ones that we've just shown you today. So even the last three weeks, their season could have looked so much different. And I just think it's not meant to be. Uh, they mm. clearly don't have the leadership out on the ground to be able to direct and, uh, I guess, show the younger players what they have done in the past. Nan Curvis Ford was an absolute disaster, so I'm not sure what Damien Harbick was trying to get out of that. They were clearly far too tall, and halfway through the last quarter, they scrapped that. So, look, some key personnel out. They have a hamstring epidemic and a soft tissue epidemic at that mm. football club and have done for a long time. So, look, they're in and around the mark, and they'll still be hard to beat, and they could cause some chaos. But you line their team up against the Western Bulldogs for that mm. last spot, chalk and cheese. We head to the ladder now because they, that was a pivotal result in both the top four race and the top eight race. So Brisbane just holding on, sorry, Fremantle just holding on by two points now from Sydney Collingwood with an opportunity to jump into the top four remarkably tomorrow. Yeah, Port Adelaide gone. Now their season is finished, as is Gold Coast. Saints, their season is alive for that eighth spot. Of course, they take on the Eagles tomorrow, so we'll get to that. And then Richmond, if you're wondering, their fixture, they play the Lions, Port Adelaide, the Hawks and the Bombers, so you feel like it's going to be difficult for them as well. So some pivotal results. St Kilda, of course, playing West Coast tomorrow. They need to win that one. We'll head to the SCG now where the Swans beat the Crows. This was set up just from quarter one dominance from Sydney. They kicked nine goals to two and they led by 42 points at the first time. Swans' best first quarter since 1997. They kicked 57 points to 15 in an absolute smashing. Right, so game over at quarter time. So there's Haywood. He was awesome. He kicked three and some really smart plays. But once again, it's their smaller forwards. Gordon's involved there. Heaney was quiet early, but then got involved in the game late. Papley will get to in a second, but they just won ground balls inside their forward 50. They were awesome from the centre bounce. This is just incredibly smart from Hayward once again, involved in that one, and Gordon's ability to finish. So game over at quarter time. So we can talk all you like about the way that Adelaide came back in this game, but this is where it was uh, won. Plus 24 to suppose, was plus 20. Adelaide took six marks in a quarter of football <laughs> inside 50s. 20 to 11, and the efficiency that they scored. So 12 scores from 20 inside 50s, yeah. and they won the tackles. So, so I don't know what Adelaide had done in the lead up to this game. And Matthew Nix can put a positive spin on it all he likes, but he's 41 and 15 as a coach, and there needs to be serious questions as to why Adelaide are currently 16th on the ladder. I think they've won one out of their last six, mm. and that's not 
acceptable. Uh, and when you look at the way that they fought themselves back into the game, that even justifies that opinion there. So Adelaide shouldn't be let off lightly for that disastrous first quarter. You mentioned Tom Papley before. I think it's gone a little bit under the radar this season, just how many centre bounces he's attending. Almost turned into a, a little mid-forward role for him. And he was great today. 22 disposals, 12 score involvements, 5 clearances, 3 goal assists and 2 goals. He's a good player. Oh, he's such a good player. He's tough, he's skillful, his work rate is enormous. And he's smart, uh, like st stuff like that, the vision that he has got. So it's a secret weapon for them, the way that he has gone on ball mm. and not afraid to chuck the magnets around a little bit. John Longmire is coaching absolutely at the top of his game. You see another goal assist there. So for him to be able to go into the centre bounce, as you said, only three players have had more centre bounce attendances than him this year. I wouldn't have said that mm. at the start of the year, considering he's an All-Australian small forward who's kicked a lot of goals in the past. But he does get a matchup that he likes. Midfield takes them forward and has massive impact. We'll head to Tassie now, where Hawthorne absolutely smashed North Melbourne. Again, this was built off a first quarter where they kicked eight goals to nothing. They were 46 points up at quarter time and won by 46 points. Yeah, and the efficiency in which they played within this first quarter. So Dispose was effectively even in the first quarter, um, but they kicked eight goals, one mm. to zero. Like, so they, they just moved the ball with, with great penetration. Newcomb was awesome. He had 30 and kicked two. Just loved that goal. He was able to drive through traffic. And finish, if he can add that to his game, he's going to be a serious midfielder. So, yeah, back to the drawing board for North, who played their grand final last week. And this is a bit of a reality check against a team who would have been in the conversation to win the wooden spoon. There's Juan Francis once again not able to hide his frustration. His teammate Jed Anderson has to come across. That was a descent 50-metre mm. penalty that he gave away, and he only had the 11 touches today. So, yeah, back to square one for North Melbourne. Uh, they're in a whole lot of trouble. We'll get to our Saturday star now. Thanks to Taylor Maid. And it goes this week to Jack Gunston, of course, returning from two games out of the side due to the passing of his father, Ray. He had 17 disposals, seven marks, kicked five goals, four, and had 11 score involvements. Yeah, emotional day for him, and you, you'll see that. That's the first goal of the game there, and he kisses the armband, of course, for his father, who had such a massive impact on our game, and you can see the response from his teammates. But he was just awesome today, and he's been... Mm. A sensational player. I mean, we, f we forget a little bit because he hasn't played a lot of footy in the last couple of years, but um, has been able to play any position. But clearly, his best has been when he's getting his touches inside forward 50. And this is one of the best set shots for the year. That's into the wind <laughs> from outside the boundary line. Yes. And he split the middle. Well, what a beautiful set shot. Uh, he's been for such a long period of time. So best on ground performance from a player who's done it many, many times before. It's been a big weekend so far, Kane. We'll head to the rest of the round now because there's going to be some pivotal games on Sunday. The Blues looking to consolidate their position inside the top eight. Collingwood, as we mentioned, they can go top four if they beat an inform Essendon. And then this is huge for St Kilda on yeah. the road against West Coast. Clearly the middle game is the feature of that. Looking for a real fast attacking game off halfback. Both teams will challenge each other on, on defence, but Essendon are in good form and St Kilda must just win to keep their season yeah. alive. We'll get to our one more thing now, Kane. And if you thought it was hard enough playing footy, have a look at some of this skill from today's action. We'll start here because that's a remarkable kick. From are they Jed practicing this? Head. What's going on? Look, look, look at this. What, what is Jack going on here? here? Like, look that was at, a goal assist. Look at the penetration <laughs> he got to swallow over the back there. That was remarkable. And Hayward, he's my man. Like that, he timed that and he deliberately <laughs> did it with the instep like, like a soccer player would. So... Players are practising all sorts of things now and it's paying off. Some pretty remarkable skills there. Kane, another fantastic on, weekend mate. of footy so far. We'll catch you next week on afl.com.au.